This project is using a PIC 16F57. It has 20 I.O. pins. is a very simple basic device to test programming and hardware interfacing. The PIC is there. All this is is 8 LEDs connected to port C. The one blinking blue LED is connected to port B. This is a 60 hertz time base I saved out of a VCR from the 1980s when I used to service VCRs. They are no longer available. This is my uh, reset switch, as so. In addition, we have a 4 megahertz crystal and two 22 PF capacitors to ground. We will look at this circuit here as an introduction, as a way to test the 16 F57 to make sure it's operating and get an idea before we get into other projects, which will include things like interfacing LCD displays, keypads, and all kinds of digital and other I.O. chips. All right, first, let's discuss our electrical connections to get the device up and running. I connected eight LEDs in the source configuration from RC0 through RC7. I'm using port C as an 8-bit output port. 8 LEDs, 8 220-ohm resistors. The I.O. on this chip has up to, a think, a 20 milliamp output. According to the spec sheet, we'll look at that in a minute. I would not recommend running... Um, eight I.O. pins at 20 milliamps each, and I'll show you why. It has a de dedicated oscillator crystal connection. You can use uh, a crystal or an RC network or a resonator or whatever. For this, I'm using a 4 megahertz crystal and two 22 PF capacitors. I've used the same 22 PF capacitors with a 16 megahertz crystal. It works fine with either one. I don't have a 20 megahertz crystal. This thing goes up to 20 megahertz. Next, let's note Master Clear, which is also your VPP pin for your in-circuit programming, which also uses RB6 and RB7. The diode here is to block the programming voltage from feeding back into the 5 volts. Otherwise, this 10K pull-up resistor through the diode keeps master clear high, and you can add in a reset switch to reset it if you need to. All right, let us turn our attention to timer zero clock input that is pin one. Several things to note here. This has a Schmidt trigger input to clean up your waveform that goes in into this, which created an interesting problem some time ago <coughs> when I did this originally. Here is the original test setup, a picture of it. You'll see this 60 hertz time base those are, let's go down here real quick. This is what these are. These were used in VCRs years ago. I had some left over from my servicing days. Um, you will not find them today. They're too rare. If you're going to use a 60 hertz source, you're going to end up using a zero crossing circuit. I have... two links in the descriptions to my zero crossing circuits back on the main website. An odd thing I found when I did this originally. Okay, it count. It seemed to work real well. Um, the actual connection here was longer than what you've seen. And I thought, okay, 
to make sure this is actually counting from the time base and not a programming mishap, I pulled the wire from the crystal and left it hanging. And lo and behold, it kept counting. And I thought, okay, I wasted the next 15, 20 minutes thinking, I know this code is correct. What is going on? Then I looked at the wire and I thought, wait a minute. So I took the wire, plugged it into ground, and the counting immediately stopped. It was programmed correctly. What had happened is the wire was acting as an antenna for the 60 hertz hum from the fluorescent light that was above my head. And this was and the Schmidt trigger was good enough to clean this up and use that um, hum noise as a clock base for 60 hertz, if you can believe that. So, yeah, that, that was a fun little thing, but I, I would suggest using a real-time base and not hanging a wire anywhere. All right, that brings us to another issue that I think was in the spec sheet somewhere, but it's nearly impossible to find. When you are not using timer zero clock in, ground it, or connect the VCC through a resistor or something, because my test on it shows that this thing is just hanging and noise is getting in there and so forth, um, it will create problems. It even created problems with the in-circuit serial programming, it seems, for reasons I don't understand and never could figure out. If you're not using the timer zero clock in pin, ground it. And this will prevent problems. All right. Once again, we're going to use a 60 or 120 hertz input on pin one, timer zero clock in. We're going to preload timer zero with a particular value. Uh, there are no interrupts or overflow flags. You're simply going to pull timer zero itself. When it's equal to zero, you know that it's overflowed. I'm going to increment a variable called count four. I could have called it anything. It's just what I happen to use. It will increment from zero to 255 at, e at either um, at one hertz or whatever. And that value on each cycle will be written to port C. Thus, the port C is counting 0 to 255 in binary before it overflows back to 0 and starts again. All right, here is our main program. It counts in binary off port C. This is an example how you set up your software. I'm again using MPLAB 10 with the XC8 extension. You don't include, oh, by the way, the assembly language version of this is at, is at the end after this clip, part of the clip. Okay, you only need to include XC.H. The compiler handles the rest of it. I'm going to go ahead and configure the fuses, as they call them. Uh, code protection is off. Watchdog timer is off. I'm not using it. XC is for the 4 megahertz crystal. If you're using, say, a 16 megahertz crystal, that would have to be HS. Okay, this total program, you can measure, you should be able to measure 1 hertz if you connect a frequency counter to LED 0. That's RC0. And you should um, read 60 hertz on it, 1 hertz on it, actually. Nonetheless, you define your frequency. In this case, I'm using 4 megahertz. You've got to have the whole 4. And you have to have unsigned long. Make sure you put the UL in there. That's to help the compiler. Now we're coming to a subroutine called setup. This is what is called from loop or main. Um, 
I have set the values of the TRIS registers. TRIS A equals 0x0F. TRIS B is all zeros. TRIS C is all zeros. For our purposes, uh, port C is set up as all outputs because you're inputting zeros. Then I go ahead, just to make sure I don't have potential problems, is I go ahead and clear all of the unused ports. Even if I'm not using them, I clear them. This could prevent problems. <clears throat> now we're going to set up the option register, and it's very simply option equals whatever value I choose. In this case, bit 5, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there, uh, assigns the clock source to the external clock in pin. The prescaler assignment bit 3, I have assigned that to the watchdog timer. 0, 1, 2, 3, there it is. If that bit was 0, it would have, it would have um, assigned the prescaler to timer 0, which would create all kinds of headaches. Now we have another subroutine. This is our 500 millisecond delay for timer 0. All you're doing is you're loading it with a preload value, either um, in this case 226. You load and you just sit here and you check it. All right. While timer 0 does not equal 0, you're just going to sit here in this little loop waiting for it to overflow and go to 0, and it breaks the loop. That is your entire delay routine. Down here in, in main, I assign, and I could have I done this, transferred this, up here if I wanted to. I just left it down in main. There is my unsigned character count. Okay, I called setup. Now I'm using a while one loop. And all I'm doing is port C equals count. Delay, uh, call the timer delay 500 milliseconds. I wait a half a second. Then I increment counter, and I circle on around forever. And it will count, go all the way, and it will overflow back to zero, and the process starts again. And that's it. You've made a 8-bit binary counter, which we will be using with LCD displays. What I like about this chip is I have so much I.O. I don't have, I've got, I can hook up hardware in rational ways without a lot of multiplexing or complexity. Nonetheless, so that's this introduction on using timer zero in a PIC chip. I'll have one later on using the 16F84A timer, which is a little different, but fairly similar. Nonetheless, um, thanks for listening. We'll catch you on the next go-around. All right, let's take a look at what this briefly, I'm not going to spend much time on it, as assembly. Typically, you're going to have a list this, include P16F57.include, error level 302. This is your configuration bits, um, chip protect off, watchdog timer off, and sets it for the XT oscillator for 4 megahertz. This is, these are here as examples if you want to use them. This was some pin definitions back here. I did not use them. You can assign a group of, using C block. You can assign several variable names to various memory uh, SRAM positions. I only used count four. I didn't use the others. This is where the actual program begins. 
your or your originate on the reset vector is at zero is at uh, flash position zero 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 whatever it tells it to go to setup all of this is usually set up by the compiler now the first thing we're going to do is load a value into the work literal into the working register this is um, what's going to be in the option register that I discussed before this sets up the bit 5 0 1 2 3 4 5 is set high to select the uh, transition on the timer 0 clock input pin um, bit 3 is your prescaler assignment 0 1 2 3 that's going to assign it to the watchdog timer. The three lower bits that sets the uh, division rate for the prescaler, which we're not using, I just left it zero. So I've loaded um, the working register with this value here. Option is my command. Whatever is in the working register is stored in the option register. You can't read the option register. It's hidden. Let's move down. Okay, clear register file port B. Uh, that's the SRAM position just cleared. I'm going to move uh, 0 to the working register and I'm going to use TRIS port B. Whatever was in W is written to the TRIS register for port B. I set them all for outputs and I clear and I cleared them all anyway. I didn't use port C and I didn't use port A. Now we're down here to loop. First thing I'm going to do is clear counter 4. And I'm going to move a, a file whatever the value is in count 4 is going to be moved file to w is going to be moved to the uh, w register the w register will be uh, written to port c now i'm going to call a routine called delay timer 0 that's down here this is all the whole delay loop delay i'm going to preload uh, the working register with a decimal 196 and I'm going to move that to the timer 0 memory position. Now I'm going to move what I'm doing here, move file timer 0 to W. All I'm doing is checking to see if it's empty. When I read timer 0, if the timer 0 register is empty, it'll set the Z or zero flag um, and it will do this what it's going to do is going to go here constantly back to wait loop if I if the uh, timer zero has an overflowed it'll jump back and it'll circle here from wait loop to go to wait loop until there is an overflow in uh, Timer zero, it goes to zero. The Z flag is then set. Let's see, bit test file, skip if set. Yep. Uh, if it is set from the overflow, which return which sets the Z flag, it'll skip the go to and return back to the main program. And that's it. All right. And you can lo you can use timer zero preload at sixty tick ticks or you can reload 226 for 30 ticks if you're using uh, 60 Hertz and you want a 1 Hertz square wave you'll have to use the 226 because that will give you 50% on 50% off square wave which will give you a 30 Hertz 30 Hertz square wave